All right, construction champions. It's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the damn house down. Man, it's either a Monday or Tuesday morning, and you're listening to the show. I'm going to put a question in the comments, because should we really, should we, I continue releasing it at 8 a.m.? Because I'm thinking about moving it to 12. I think maybe 12 right before lunch. When At least that's what YouTube's telling me. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, according to them, it's after 12 p.m. Because my audience, I for being a bunch of construction workers, it's pure white. From like 2 a.m. to 12. None of my listeners are on YouTube. So I know you guys are on job sites. That's why. So I'm thinking about putting the release back. I'm going. To, you can comment on this in YouTube, or if you're listening to it on one of the uh, podcast channels, go into the Q and A and check that out because I want to know: Is 8 a.m. too early for a construction podcast? I mean, <laughs> you got me on that one. That's why I, you know, I'm just an amateur podcaster here. But as always, I'm super excited. We have a fantastic guest today, Stuart. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much, Ron, and uh, my own insights on that, uh, to your point. It's never too early to have a construction podcast, but when it comes to timing and availability, then uh, be very mindful uh, that noon sounds like a, a better time. But yeah, uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. See, we already got I already got some feedback on that. I love it, <laughs> but I'm excited to have Stuart here today. He's you know my favorite guest of so the guys that not only are out there doing it every day but they're also helping other people do it and i'm not going to dive too much in your story i'm going to let you tell it but Stuart, tell all the champions out there a little bit about yourself yeah thanks uh so a little about a little bit about me i'm a carpenter by trade uh was been in the industry uh since i was about uh, 18 19 so in the the mid 2000s uh went through got the whole the whole experience from residential, commercial, and a little bit of industrial and kind of everything in between. Um, escalated my way up the industry, got into to site management and leadership, da, da, da. started my own business, was doing the general contracting stuff, um, still continuing to, to do that. I uh, jumped down the route of receiving coaching. Uh, I was, I'm also a high performance ice hockey coach at the same time as well. Mm. Um, and then uh, really just, I somehow became the beacon for a number of my trades coming to me asking like, Hey, how do we do this? How do we do that? And it was just kind of built up over time. And I just made a point of helping those that were around. And I got to a certain point. I was like, Hey, are you guys okay? If I actually start charging for this? Um, they're just like, honestly, we, we figured that you would have been charging for this a long time ago. And I'm like, okay, I left money on the table, but part of that learning experience, but, um, yeah. And it's, it kind of, uh, through my own experience in the industry, through other coaching that I've received through my ongoing growth, uh, and, and process, that's kind of how I've built out, uh, the, the business within it. And yeah, we make a point of exclusively helping construction trades with, uh, with growing their business uh, while I continue to be in the trenches as well and continue to grow the general contracting business uh, at the same time. So I love kind of being one of the ones who's been swinging a hammer for a couple of decades. Uh, and yet at the same time, I also know how to uh, click a mouse and uh, work an Excel sheet at the same time. So, yeah. I love it, man. So I got to ask the high performance ice hockey coaching. Yeah. How, so are you a retired professional hockey player? Do we have a celebrity uh, no, on no, our I, hands here? <laughs> no, no, I, ne I never got into uh, the professional world. It was just um, being an exceptional coach and really caring about what was going on. Did all the schooling required and just kept on working my way up the up the ranks. And, uh, you know, got to a, a place where I was getting paid to, to be coaching hockey, which, you know, at, at some point in time in my younger years would have... Uh, was just like a just a dream and a concept, and it just put in the the time and effort while working in the industry uh, in the construction industry. Um, yeah, it just uh, it's I'm just one of those guys when I set my mind to something, I'll do whatever it takes to be able to get it done. So it's okay. uh, I think that's a a very common trait for a lot of guys in our industry where we we can put our head down and just make it work. 
I love it, man. I love yeah. the fact that that was a, a dream and you went and chased it down. So let's dive in there. I'm going to ask the million dollar question. And that is what makes a construction champion? So for me, what makes a construction champion is that individual that can evolve from being an absolute spectacular technician within the business, you know, you're a carpenter, you're a plumber, you're an electrician, you're a drywaller, whatever it happens to be, and then continuing to learn and grow. You've, made, you've mastered your trade, or even you've just become really good at your trade, maybe not mastered it, but then you continue to push to learn and grow within it. Because if you've started your own business and you are doing that, that is an entirely new skill set that you need to learn. You need to learn how to be able to hire and fire. You need to learn how to manage your time. You need to learn how to do all these kinds of things. So that... That champion comes from this desire to continue to learn and grow and become better. Um, because once you become stagnant within your business, your business starts dying. Um, so I think that individual who wants to continue to grow, make a difference and excel at, um, at every kind of element and aspect of, of what's going on within the world, that's, that's someone who's a champion. Awesome. I love it. So let's dive into that a little bit. Being somebody that you, you've done that transition, you help people do that transition. You know, you get really, really good at doing your job or being a master of that trade. And then you decide you're going to go out on do it, go out and do it yourself. Like that's how most of us get into this. How, what, what's one of the biggest first herders that you're seeing out there right now that you have to help guys get over that they people should be mentally preparing themselves for uh well so very applicable within the trades world to realize you may be a journeyman or a master of whatever trade but you start your own business you're a first year apprentice within your business so to to think that because you're this this red this journeyman again master whatever electrician that you think you're already going to be a master of business or you've seen your uh you know your previous employers or whatever that uh that have done it uh you're like oh this guy if this guy can do it i can do it like you got to understand you got to get back into the trenches again uh and you know the equivalent of uh drilling holes or digging digging trenches or whatever it's got to be you got to do that same kind of thing and you're going to bootstrap a lot of your business so having that mentality and mindset of realizing that you have so much to learn within it is, is really crucial. Like we have, we have specific areas that we focus on, but that mindset of like, yeah, you know what? I don't know how to find work. I don't know how to price jobs. I don't know how to hire. I don't know how to do all these different things. You need to be able to really communicate that and be aware of that and then do what you got to do to, to correct it. I love it. And I, I think it might be one of my favorite ways that I've had, like more 130, what, 130 episodes, something like that into this. I think that's one of the best ways I've heard that explained is like <laughs> you might be a master at whatever you do. But the moment you start your own business, you got to look at it as it's day one of that apprenticeship. It's the same thing. You might understand how to do the work, but from a business aspect, it's just like showing up day one when you, yep. and you were just starting to figure out, you know, what end of the wrench to hold. I love that. Yeah. I mean, you know, what what end of the wrench, how to read a tape measure, like and the equivalent of how to read a tape measure. How about how to read any of your financial documents? Like, can you look at your profit and loss statement? If you even know what your profit and loss statement is, can you look at it and know what's actually going on within it? Do you know how much money you made on your last job? A lot of the guys that are our prospective clients on the coaching side of things, um, I asked that question, how much money did you make in your last job? A lot of them are just like, <laughs> I have no idea. Money's like, well, in the bank. There's yeah, money exactly. in the bank. We have money in the bank, so that means we're <laughs> profitable, right? Like, well, do you owe people money? Are you paying yourself? Are you paying yourself appropriately? Uh, do, are you paying your taxes? Um, yeah, so it's a it's a whole thing, and there's so much to learn with it. I absolutely love business. I I don't think I could ever go back and you know work a nine to five or work for someone else again. It there's just it you have the accountability, you have the responsibility of what goes on with it, but it comes with it comes with freedom, it comes with choice, it comes with so much. So I I, I really, if people are are willing to step up, I always 
uh, suggest that people step into their own business. You'll get, you will be challenged every single day. And if you're into that, then it's great for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Your job. <laughs> but you know, one of the things that I was thinking of why you were saying that is like, I'm just the, the showing up like day one apprentice. So when we're that, when you're that, like you have resources, you have people around you to help you, or you <laughs> went to a school or, or there's something. But when we head out on our own, a lot of times we just figure, I'll just figure it out on the fly because I'm a master of what I do. Yep. I can just figure the rest out. But like you would have probably never became that master if it, we can probably all look back at people that were mentors or people that trained us that helped get us or teachers that helped get us to become that master of our craft. You would have never got there without them. And just because in that process, it's just like required. They're there. Like there's not, it's just something that happens, but in business, it's not necessarily something that's required or uh, thought of as something that you need. And that to me, like, that's, that's amazing. Which is, which is kind of mind blowing in its own right. When you think of like the, the volume of risk of you going and starting an apprenticeship, uh, Elect electrician apprenticeship, you have very little risk of if things don't go right. You're getting a paycheck. You're you show up, someone tells you what to do, and that's it. But on that flip side, you start your own business, you're that master electrician. You're like, you don't you don't have that guaranteed paycheck. You don't have anything guaranteed. And so, like to be able to I, I, and again, so that's why I appreciate that the headspace of the industry and our whole thing as so much of it is just put your head down and work. But at the same time, you need to go to look up and know which way, like what you're working towards. And that's a lot of the the actual kind of more X's and O's of, of what we do on the coaching side of things is like, where are you going? Who are you? Like, uh, we are very values focused. So what is that? Are you going for it is honesty and respect something that's really important for you? Is, is high level quality craftsmanship really important to you? Is getting in and out of a job as quick as, as possible important to you? Then make sure that's intentional. And then when it comes to everything that you're building within your business needs to revolve around that. And so like if you're someone that's very, very heavily honesty focused, if you find someone who doesn't value honesty at all, whether that's an employee, a client, a business partner, a supplier, that's going to spell, it's, uh, that's a recipe for disaster in and of itself, in, in every entity that you do. And so being very mindful of this kind of stuff really goes, uh, really goes a, a long way. And that's, that's part of that whole, that whole process. And so when it comes to the receiving coaching and getting coaching, whether it's, you know, it's us or anyone else, there's a lot of great business coaches out there. Um, and depending on what you're going for. Um, but I, I think it's really important for that headspace to change of, of like, no, I'm going to figure this out myself to being like, you know what? No. In, like, that's why I think the rec recognizing or acknowledging you're, you're a first year apprentice within the business world is so important. Like, who's the journeyman? Who am I wanting to learn from? And learn from them as much as possible, then move on to the next one. Like, over the course of our time within an apprenticeship, you're going to have multiple, multiple journeymen that are teaching you how to do things, different tricks, different tips of different stuff. Use that same approach to business. So like, I don't want to have someone that's like uh, as a coaching client for, for five years. Like if I haven't taught you everything I know within kind of two to three, it's probably a problem. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do have, of course, the, the consideration of being in, in the industry and I'm, I'm always learning. I'm always growing. And then I filter those through and that applies into the coaching side of things. But now it's it's really important to, to learn from different people, get those different perspectives, and then form your own way of what business is for you, what is success to you and, and that whole kind of concept. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I'm a couple, I get, they're all, there's a lot of amazing coaches just like yourself out there. I get to talk to pretty much all of them because yep. uh, I do this show and it's like, if we're going to talk about who's, what's a construction champion, like let's get people that have the pulse on the industry. But what you're saying is like exactly true is like, you need to figure out who you have alignment with, who speaks to you. It's why I try to get as many of them on here as I can, because I think, it's not a cookie cutter solution 
when it's figuring out who's going to help you grow your business, you need to find that right fit for you. Somebody that's going to push you, that understands you and you connect with. And then it's something that has to be re always revisited. Like every 12 months, you got to be looking at it and thinking, am I growing here? Do I need to, what, what else do I need to bring in and to, to, to continue that growth? And I think that's so important. And I love when I hear coaches come on here and they say that because that at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Like I'm in mentor groups and coach masterminds and stuff. And my goal is to get out of them. The last guy I hired to be my coach was like in 12 months, you better be ready to hand me off to the next person. Like that's the goal that I want to have with you. It's like, we're going to do this for 12 months it, and you better know who the next person is. I need to talk to because I'm going to continue to grow and we should always be trying. There's levers to all of this. There's levers to your apprenticeship. There's levers to business. There's levers to every aspect of your life. And it's always about how are you going to continue to move to that next one? Yeah. And um, uh, again, to your point, review it annually. Where am I going? And that's that's the value of kind of end of year strategic planning, um, creating that plan. And that's that whole idea, like I said, of looking ahead. Um, but even so, it, it depends on where where these individuals are within the industry. Like if you're there's some guys that uh, they can be five or six years or 10 years into their business that are still so trapped in the day to day, they they can't look up mm -hmm. or they think that they can't look up. Um, but even if you're just starting your business or you're at that kind of point, like um, even this idea or concept of strategic planning, like, like what does that even look like? Okay. Set something super simple, set a revenue goal. I want to do 200,000, 500,000, a million, 5 million, 10 million, whatever, obviously depending on where you're at. And then how are you going to make that happen? Break that down. What do I have to do in January? in order to be able to make that happen. What do I do in February, March, da, da, da. And like carry that through and then continue to review, set those goals, da, 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 whatever within it, but looking down the road. So then I mean, when you know you're putting your head down and you're cracking away and you're working away, every, you take that look up every once in a while, yeah, I'm still on that same path. Um, an analogy I use all the time with, uh, with our clients is to do with driving. Like if you're looking three feet in front of your hood, everything is terrifying. Like you're, you're, <laughs> reacting to everything and it's not possible like you're tense the whole time whereas if even if you're looking 100 feet down the road you're like oh okay there's a pothole there's a deer there's another car what am i going to do now to be able to make sure i'm anticipating that whole thing and ebbing and flowing with it but if you don't know where you're going or, or what you're doing you're you're stuck in that really short-term mindset and then everything is overwhelming so yeah. Everything's a threat. I love that. I mean, yeah. it's unless you're looking down because there are deer, there are cars, there's all that stuff coming at you as you're a business owner, especially in construction. And there's a nut, yeah. there's so much stuff that's within that three, just that little, little radar there. Like if you're just focusing on the next week, like it is like you're looking at hell all the time because you yeah. it's all these projects the stuff that's happening if you're not looking out to what the grand picture is yeah it can be really hard and it's it's super chaotic as well because again like oh like emergencies uh changes oh, okay no not this now this and like okay oh there was this mistake okay now we need to push this project back and do this and like you get so worried about it which I mean, again, there's a time and place to be looking at that. And there, I've had a number of conversations where guys have this headspace where they can't break out of that. Like, yeah, but I have to worry about that. Like, in a sense, I, I agree. Um, also, like, do you have a team? Is it possible for you to, because a lot of, a lot of combination of both trades guys, as well as business owners, we like control. <laughs> and so to actually let go of control and have responsibility be delegated, not abdicated. That's a whole thing, but delegated to your team and empower your team to be able to be on that. Like, guess what? You can take that little step back. Maybe that's just ordering materials. Just that alone is it one step. How about 
I, for each of our clients, one of the first things I really push to go to make sure that they stop doing, stop doing dump runs, stop picking up materials, stop doing the stuff where an 18 year old with a driver's license can go and do, get that off your plate, right? Because it's, it's such a waste of time. We are the most, as the owners, we are the most valuable people within our businesses, no matter what employees want to think and say, whatever we are, because we're the ones that can, that have the flexibility to do everything. But something like that is a zero skill thing to do. It's just time. Like, oh, like you pay someone, depending on where you're at within the world, uh, you know, 20, $25 an hour to be able to go and do this. But if that give that frees up, you know, say it costs you a couple hundred bucks a week to go to do it, but that frees up the time for you to go and find more work uh, or work on the business and be like, hey, you know what? I'm not actually making profit on jobs. I need to adjust my pricing or I need to adjust my estimating process or I need to da -da -da. do that. You need that time. And um, especially because so many, so many uh, of us, especially at the beginning, it's just like, you know, you spend eight, 10, 12 hours a day on the tools. Then you try to come back and you try to work on the business after that. You can't accomplish anything at that point in time. Like you're, you're gassed from the day. Mm. So at the very least, if you can throttle that down to at most eight hours a day on the tools and then whatever, but it, as much as possible, when you can find these areas to be able to offload things off your plate, so you can work on the business, sell the work, find that kind of stuff. That's really, 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 really important for these guys and guys. I'll I love it. And I got a question for you because this, this 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 makes sense to me here from this is how come we always like end up just doing the most low level stuff like got like business owners in the construction industry where like you said the dump runs the picking stuff up like the most the stuff you could like you could hire a high school kid or uh, somebody to go do for practically nothing. But like, that's the shit we insist on needs to be on our plate. And I don't understand <laughs> that. You, the, the headspace that I originally had and that I've with a lot of the clients has just been like, well, I'm just trying to save money. I'm trying to save money. And it's that's that just looking in front of the hood thinking. Because you're probably, maybe you're struggling financially. Maybe you're pinching pennies to go to make it work. But if you don't give yourself that freedom and flexibility to be like, there's something wrong here, then you're never going to be able to correct it. So you need to be able to create that space and that void for you to be able to, to make that happen. Um, so it's, I, I think for the most part, it's just around saving money. And the, again, yeah. the irony. Because it's never like, we're going to go do the high level stuff, like send the yeah. guys to do, you know, something that is a lot more valuable from an hourly perspective. And I'm going to go do this. <laughs> yeah. <It's> just... <laughs> if, if, if each of these owners started actually tracking their time and I, I say ideally billing their time, but at the very least tracking their time and like, okay, what would, and their, their charge out rate is their charge out rate, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 150, whatever, Again, everyone, it's a whole splatter of what charge out rates are based on different trades and whatever within it. But like, be mindful of that. Like, okay, well, you know, I just spent three hours today doing, you know, uh, a material pickup, a drop off, and a dump run. Okay. And a charge out rate of, say, 100 bucks an hour. Like, there's 300 bucks. But you're looking at that in the sense of, oh, well, you know what? I don't need to charge out for my time. So that was free. So that makes that job more profitable. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it's just because you're not tracking your time and your charge out as the most valuable uh, person in your business. You're not, tra you're not tracking that. And one of those things when it, as you're trying to take those steps back from swinging the hammer, reading the tape, hucking pliers, whatever it is that you're doing, it's that mindfulness of that time that you're putting in and either making sure that you're either charging for that kind of stuff or that you're at least cognizant of it. Even as things like, how much time do you spend from first point of contact with a lead until actually starting the job? How many hours are you putting in, right? Site visits, emails, phone calls, quoting, follow-up, all that kind of stuff. How much time are you putting into that? Because you need to be aware of it. Because if you're looking to be able to get to a point where you want, you don't want to be doing that or whatever, you're going to have a salesperson doing it. Mm. Are you paying that salesperson commission? 
are you paying that salesperson a salary, an hourly wage? Or are you going to have an admin that's part of this as well, that's that's part of that process? How much time is getting put onto this, right? And then and then that doesn't even that take into account building a process, being aware of the step by step of what's going on within it and that, that whole thing. But it's yeah, taking those first kind of steps of of kind of recognizing where that comes from. But the the vast majority, again, so much of this industry, the vast majority of construction businesses are guys and gals who are incredible at the trade and they think that they can make that step, but just take that headspace of, I need to learn all these different things, figure out what you need to, what you need to make to survive financially speaking, just make sure you're kind of breaking just ahead of that and use the rest of the time to be flexible, to, to learn and grow and become better at the craft that is business and business like business even more so than uh, than the trades that we're in ourselves is infinite it, there's so much to learn it's like in the sense like okay great i learned how to <clears throat> i learned how to do sales really well like okay perfect great you just you just became a journeyman or master carpenter okay well great now you need to learn hr hiring training onboarding okay great that's you stepping into oh now i'm learning electrical learning that whole thing. Oh, well, yeah, actually now I need to learn more uh, on the administrative and financial side of things. Oh, great. You just started an HVAC apprenticeship, right? So it's just like in this sense of like they're each area of business is so different from one another, but having that headspace of trying to learn and grow and learn and grow and, and kind of put it all through. So it ties back into that initial point. Well, I, I think where we, we drop the ball a lot of times is when, like you were talking about, it's not setting the process or understanding exactly what it takes. So like, and then we're like, we're going to hire somebody to do this. And we have no idea what that process is. This is, that's just business in general. Like everything you're doing as an owner operator or in any of these roles, like you should be documenting that, having an understanding of what is going on the timelines, because how are you ever going to train anybody or have any expectations? I think that's where a lot of rub, especially with sales comes in, is we just always assume they're not doing anything how I'd want to have it done. But have we ever even talked to them about how we want it done? Or did we set them up with a process that we use? Or did we just say, man, you're really good at sales. You should just go out here and sell these jobs for me. Exactly. Exactly. My goodness. Um, and to, to, to have an initial point within it, I mentioned it before, uh, of delegating versus advocating. So if you bring someone on and you have no idea, you don't have a process, you don't know what's going on. You're just like, you're good at sales here, go and do it. That you're advocating, which means like, you don't know, you haven't set the precedent of how to do something. What's the difference between bad, good, and great when it comes to what they're doing um, and setting it at a standard and level where they can have success, like real success, um, and that you can actually track that success. Um, and whether that's going to be, to your point, a, a salesperson or an apprentice. Like if you bring on, okay, you're like, oh, great, I'm bringing on my first employee. I'm bringing on a second-year apprentice. What do you expect that apprentice to be able to do, first and foremost? And if they can't do those things, how are you going to make sure that they can? Uh, are you going to take the time to train them? Are you just going to yell and scream at them and hope that they they learn through screaming, which is something that happens a lot in the <laughs> industry? Um, but that's because you're just trying to to advocate these different things and uh, whatever. So by putting that time and effort, like you said, document all the stuff that you're doing and like step by step. Even like, and some people may think that it's like. But that's going to take so much time and whatever that it it does take time it takes time to build your business but then at the same time how that's going to flip is that then you can properly train and delegate and like okay i'll we'll use carpenter's example like a second year apprentice i expect him to go to set a be able to build a set of stairs but if he can't or they can't then here's this process of how to be able to do it and then i have a more experienced person be that hand holding process of making sure that they know how to be able to do it. Hmm. And not just like, what do you mean you don't know how to do it? Like, just build a set of stairs. You're a second year apprentice, figure it out. And then they build a, a, a not so good set of stairs. I'm going to be mindful of profanity. Uh, a not so good 
uh, set of stairs. And then you get upset because you didn't put in the time and effort to train them. You didn't show them how to do it. They didn't know how to do it. And it's just, then you, it just, it sets everyone up for failure. Um, so taking that time to build the processes and, and do it all out, how long it's, and this is how long you're expecting it to take. Then also track how long it actually took. That's a really good, valuable data for estimating that kind of stuff. But uh, as a little side, whatever, uh, tools required, materials required, skills required, um, and be on top of that and be like, oh, do you know how to, I'll stick with the stairs. Uh, do you know how to cut stringers? No, I don't know how to do that. Perfect. Then I know that's something that either I or one of the team needs to show you how to do. Right? Here's the process mm -hmm. of how to do it. Reading it, great. Maybe you watch a YouTube video, great. In between, you know, podcasts, uh, then you can watch this video <laughs> how to be able to uh, how to cut stringers. And then you have the hand holding of, okay, this is how you do it. And be part of that process of helping them learn. And then all of a sudden you, you get this apprentice who's done three, four, five sets of stairs that you've been really intentional about turning on. All of a sudden you don't have to think about it again. Then you can take that next level up. Maybe they're then sending you the, the, the takeoff list of materials needed for it because they're so um, ingrained in it. So, yeah. I love it, man. Great stuff. I mean, yeah. really great stuff. This is the stuff you have to learn if you're going to become a master in business and continue to grow and scale personally and professionally. So yeah. for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to connect with you, follow you, do any, like where do, what's the best places for them to do that? So uh, simply put our website, which is just windsorwolves.com. Um, it's a, initially going to go to the contracting side of things, but there's a little tab up there. You can flip over to the coaching. Uh, we do have like a, a light duty social media presence, uh, which is just uh, Instagram is at Windsor Wolves Creations. Um, yeah, those are going to be the kind of primary points, but just feel free to kind of look us up on the contracting side of things. We're on house, we're on home stars, we're on blah, 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 all that kind of platforms, whatever. <laughs> We're a member of uh, of our local home builders uh, association, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'd say predominantly check out the website. Uh, and then there's lots of opportunities to call and connect um, with us with us through that. And yeah, but uh, really appreciate uh, the invitation to, to be out here and have this conversation with you. I know I can I can rabbit hole uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty easily. So I, I was trying to keep it as, as tight as possible for me. But uh, yeah, I appreciate this time here, Ron. Yeah, I think you kept it very tight and very, very to the point. I mean, it's clear, understandable. I think you helped a lot of guys or at least gave, you know what, it's it's about helping. But also, I think a lot of times it's about just getting the thought process started, like start realizing some of the stuff that's going on. So for doing that today, I want to thank you and thank you for taking the time to be for being on Construction Champions. Yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And one kind of um, last kind of thought within this, we do, uh, we're based out of the, the West Coast of, uh, of Canada in Vancouver. Uh, we host uh, group calls uh, from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, just as a general group call, uh, something that anyone who's kind of interested in what we're kind of all about, it's open uh, for people to reach out to us and be able to join. And you can learn more about us, our process, what we kind of do. Um, yeah, it's just a, a great place to, to start. Get to meet some of the clients, meet new prospective people, and get to network with other people uh, within the industry who are uh, keen on, on growth and development. So, yeah. Awesome. I love that, man. Thank you for extending the invitation to uh, all the champions out there listening today. Absolutely. Thank you. So, Construction Champions, another episode in the books. And I want to know, where do you think you are as a business owner? Are you an apprentice? Are you a journeyman? Are you a master? Like, where along the, where along that hierarchy are you? Because we're all, we're all really good at what we do. Like, you wouldn't be out there if you wasn't. But have you invested or have you spent the time to become really good at being a business owner? Because that's when things can start to get fun is when you start to understand some of the stuff that Stuart talked about today with the money, the time, hiring, actually giving people a roadmap to being able to live up to the expectations you have. That is how we start to get to that why. 
and start living that life that we wanted to live when we traded a job for owning our own business and having the ability to grow, go grow something. So I want you to go look in the mirror, ask yourself, like, where am I on that? And have I invested in becoming better? Stop looking three miles in front of you. So for, for reference, three miles in front of you would be it right now. Say this is a third. Oh, look, when's this going to come out? This is coming out on a Thursday. So it's a Thursday. If you are worried about the two the jobs that start on Monday and Tuesday of next week, you are looking way, way too close. That's why it's chaos. So that's just a little bit of reference. And let's just put it this way. If you're worried about any of the stuff that's going to happen next week on a job, you're, for, you're, you're way too far down in the weeds. Now, there's always going to be stuff to worry about. And I don't want it, I don't want the comments of Ron, well, how am I going to run a business if I'm not understanding what's happening next week? I'm not saying to not understand what's going on in your business. What I'm saying is if, you're worried about the cement guys showing up next Wednesday at a project. You're focusing way, way too narrow of your vision there. And you need to, you need to look up a little bit and start to, to grow as a business leader and a construction champion. And I mean, that's why we're here listening to this today. Actually, you guys are here to listen to Stuart. I don't think anybody tunes in necessary to listen to me, but that's why I bring rock star guests on. So construction champions, Make sure you go check out all of our great sponsors that make the show possible. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Introducing Buildercoms, the construction communication software that's changing the game. Say goodbye to communication challenges and hello to effortless communication. With Buildercoms, you can communicate with clients, share pictures, videos, and documents, and keep clients informed about the progress of their projects. Get real-time updates, prevent miscommunications and delays, and ensure successful projects. Don't let bad communication ruin your construction projects. Try Buildercoms today. Visit us at buildercoms.com.